welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be taking you step by step on how to get a seller's permit. So you are actually going to be going with me on my computer and I'm going to be sharing my screen and showing you how to answer all the questions. So without further ado, let's just get so right. First, I'm going to be sharing some of the more common questions that people have. So question number one. Do you need an LLC to get a seller's permit? And the answer is no, you do not need an LLC to get a seller's permit. People do this all the time being a sole prop. And honestly, this is probably the first business document you're going to get when starting out your clothing store. Number two, does it cost any money? No, a seller's permit is 100% free. All that you need to do is you are responsible for reporting how many taxes you collect at the end of the year. So where you go to get this license is your county's tax collector and because my business was originally registered in California, that is going to be cdtfa.ca.gov for me. But for you, all you have to do is Google county tax collector and it should bring you to a similar page where you can get your seller's permit. So keep in mind that sometimes it can be called a resale certificate, it can be called a sales and use tax permit, it can be called a wholesale license, seller's permit, and so on. So just look up your county's tax collector and if you're not sure, just ask me in the comments below and I can help you out with that. So let's get into actually answering the questions. So grab your cup of tea guys because we are about to get started. So first and foremost, we are going to go to our county's tax collector. So for me, that's going to be cdtfa.ca.gov. And here you're going to go and click register for a permit. If you're in California, you're going to be following the exact same steps as me, but if not, it should still be a similar process. So here you're going to click add a new business location to an existing account, even if you don't have an existing account. Here we are going to mark that we are selling items or goods in California because even if you don't live in California, you probably will be shipping an order to somebody who lives there at some point. So I'm also going to be putting purchasing items from out of state for use in California because you never know when you're going to be shipping something there or dealing with it. So put it just in case. And then I'm also going to be putting employing 10 or more people because I do plan to have employees in the future. So if you do as well, just put that down to be safe. That's going to be it for this section. And so next, you're just going to put no for this, no, no. So just mark all no because we're just selling clothes, so it's going to be pretty easy. And then just click no again. No, no. No. So basically, it's just a bunch of no's. And then for me personally, this is going to be a yes, unfortunately. But if it's not for you, just mark no. So for my purposes, I'm going to put yes because I started in 2020. And then for this part, I will put no because we are not going to be planning on hiring anybody domestically for the purpose of our profit and budget. So I would recommend that you put no for this. And then for the business type that you're registering for, go ahead and put in a sole prop because you're most likely going to be starting off as a sole proprietor. So unless there's something else, go ahead and put that. And then here you go ahead and put in your SSN, your driver's license, and for me the driver's license date is going to be Florida, so I'm going to pick that. Are we changing from one type of business entity to another? We are not, so just go ahead and click no. And then here go ahead and put your real legal government name and then the address of where you plan to run your business. So for me, this is actually my forwarding address that is located in California and that is why I'm getting a seller's permit in California. So put in either your forwarding address or your home address if that's where you're going to be doing your business. And then is the above information correct? Yes. And then I already have an account with them and a permit so it's asking me this but you probably won't see this screen so you can just disregard this part. And then it's going to be asking if the business is going to be accepting credit card payments here you can click yes and when it asks if you're making internet sales go ahead and click yes as well so the merchant card processor name is just asking for the merchant you use to accept credit and debit card payments this can be anything like shopify payments it can be paypal it can be chase so i'm just going to be putting chase bank and then the card processor account honestly i never understood this question i just put checkings and it worked so just type in checkings and then Will the business be accepting credit card payments? Yes. Are we making internet sales? Yes, we are. Um, are we making internet sales through a third party? No. And then now it's going to ask you to provide your business website. So go ahead and type in your domain name. So mine is going to be baddieallnight.com. And then just click next. 
But now it is going to be asking for your NAICS code and all that is just a classification number that federal agencies use to classify your business. So for us, our code is going to be 448120. And if you're not sure, you can just go to NAICS.com and look up your number. So just put in 448120. It's going to make you click search. So just click search and like women's clothing stores and hit OK and click next. Now for this part, I'm going to click yes because we are shipping taxable goods from an out of state location to customers in California. So click yes and click next. And then for these two, you can just click no and no. For this, you can click no as well, unless you do have a retail location in California. And then for me, I am registering because I have an economic nexus in California, basically meaning I don't have a physical location there, but I have a digital location there. So for me, that's yes. Based on your situation and what state you're living in and shipping from, that might be no. Well, the start date of our sales and use tax is going to be today, the day you sign up. So just type in the day that it is when you're signing up for this. And then projected monthly sales. Well, we're shooting for the stars. So let's say 5,000 our first month. And do we anticipate zero dollars in sales? No, we do not. And then projected monthly taxable sales, you can do like 200. And then for the products that will be sold, you can just put in the same description that I did. So go ahead and click next. For this, just hit at a different address and put in your business's street address. So for me, that's going to be my forwarding address, like I said. And then go ahead and click to verify your address because it'll fill in the zip code for you. Without the full zip code, it won't let you go through for some reason. So just click that blue button and once it verifies, just click OK. And then it'll select both of those addresses for you. So just leave that if that's where you're planning to do your business, like I said, and then hit next. I know this is such a long video guys, so thank you so much for sticking through. I know it's boring, but this is something that's really important to do when you're first starting out. So now what you're going to do is you're going to add a supplier and you probably don't know one starting out fresh, so I'm just going to give you one. So go ahead and go to Google and type in TikTok LA and then just put in all that information. So this is a popular wholesale clothing store that you can just use for now. And go ahead and click add a record. You're going to put in TikTok LA. Uh, you can skip that part. And then the phone number, just put in this phone number that's on Google. So 213-745-2277. And then for the product purchase, just go ahead and type in women's clothing, including tops, bottoms, sets, accessories, Jackets, ETC. Then go ahead and put their street address. So it's going to be 673 East 23rd Street, Los Angeles, California 90011. So you can put this wholesaler down even if you don't live in California because they ship out to any state if you have your wholesale license. So just click here to verify your address. And then click it again, it's so weird. I hate the websites that they have for this. And then just click save and then add. So now you're going to have that here. And then go ahead and click next. And then just leave your name and then the address that you are going to be using. So now they're going to be asking your reporting basis and that's going to be annual for us. So just click that I acknowledge that I have read all the information correctly. And then go ahead and put your legal government name. I apologize for my neighbor guys, these people walk so loud and I can't do anything about it. So I'm so sorry if you can hear it. Um, so your role in the application is going to be the owner and then go ahead and put your professional email address that you are actually going to check because they will need to send you important information once in a while and you need to be able to access that email. So don't just put some spam address, put something that you actually check and then go ahead and confirm it. And then for your phone number, you can put your real one or you can also get a Google voice number and then just deactivate all the notifications for it. And that's actually what I do for my business phone number. So there's a little tip for you. Click next and then just check that and declare that you are understanding everything, blah, blah, blah. 
hit next and then once you're finished George is going to hit submit so that is it for the seller's permit guys it's really not that hard of a process it's just really long and really boring so thank you for sticking through to this video like I said if you have any questions at all go ahead and leave them down below and I will try to help you out and each state is going to have a questionnaire that's a little bit different from each other but like I said they should be similar for the most part and if you follow it close enough you should get your seller's permit pretty much instantly within like two days. So just make sure you check your emails and any follow-up information that they ask for and it should be a breeze for you guys. So thank you so much again for watching this video. If you don't want to miss any important content and important videos that come out, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. So again, if this video helped you out, make sure to leave a thumbs up and a comment and see y'all in the next one. Bye!